to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. recognition of Mrs. Jennifer Snyder for work in the Building Community Partnerships and a robust internship program. That's so, a mouthful. <laughs> she does a lot. So she does a lot. Mr. Haas, if you would uh, share, and Mrs. Snyder, if you would stand up. We want to make sure that we recognize you. You got a friend saying, Mrs. Snyder. Come on. <laughs> I'll stand back here. All right. So um, with new legislation, new talk of, uh, you know, graduation pathways, diploma types, I go to a lot of conferences with principals, superintendents, and the concept of work-based learning comes up. And there are some of them that are stressed to the max, don't know what they're going to do, how they're going to get their kids' experiences at work-based learning. I don't care if you're talking if somebody at the level of a Penn High School or somebody at a smaller high school like, um, I don't know, Kasten's an easy example or whatever. And then I speak up and I'm like, well, I got 114 graduates and we got 72 of them getting a work-based learning experience in our small town of Rochester. And they want to ask how, and I'm like, well, I really can't answer that. That's because of Mrs. <laughs> Snyder. Um, she had that in the works long before I became the high school principal. I'm just blessed to get to talk about it when I'm in those meetings. Um, she builds relationships uh, with our students, with our community businesses, and then brings that together through her ability to build those individual relationships and that collaboration happens do we have bumps in the road along the way yes but guess what mrs snyder pretty much handles them without mrs agginson and i's help she meets with the business meets with the students has those conversations with parents um, it's really easy for me to brag on what we do when i go to these meetings or to stand up here and do that but i'll turn it over to her because i want her to talk about some of the numbers of businesses we get partnerships with and that's all because of her and I have very little hands-on with that um, you know I'm throwing out ideas with our heavy equipment we got two businesses that came to me over spring break they want to take kids that are juniors and give them two-year internships and make that something that then they're going to give them like six thousand dollars in tools I just introduce that to Jenny as we stand here it'll be something I present to her here in the middle of the next week and she'll run with it I won't have to do anything with that so that's priceless to me um, we got a lot of that going on at the high school but Jenny is a exemplar of what we have going on with that so I'll kind of I'm going to ask her to kind of talk about how that process looks because if I start to do it I'm going to have to stop and then ask her questions so it'll make us both look better if I just let her kind of talk about that but if you hear about internships, work-based learning experiences, we are an exemplar in the state, and it's due to Mrs. Snyder. So I want to thank her, but also give her a chance to kind of talk about all the hard work she does. No, 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 you're good. So, well, first of all, I have to say, it, I wouldn't be anywhere without everyone's support in this room, because you know I've been backed when there are issues. Um, I'm not questioned when I come to Oscar with ideas. We just discuss it. Um, and, and I feel very supported, which is why I'm able to go out and meet with businesses and you know, talk to students and feel like I can make decisions without having to come to Oscar and Lori for every single thing. So I kind of just run with it. Um, but it started with um, me setting up presentations with juniors. So I go to the junior class now every year and I present to them about the internship program and what it entails and how to be a part of that. Um, I start accepting applications for the program in April, and the juniors coming in will turn those in um, throughout the next several months, really. Over the summer, I work on those as well. I'll set up meetings with new businesses if I've never worked with them before. Sometimes I'm simply calling and just asking, do you happen to have this department? Do you know anyone who has this department? We have some more engineering students, and I need an engineer. Do you have any engineers? And so it really just starts with, this is, this is what I'm looking for, what do you have? And I end up with a list of things that businesses have in the area, and then I keep it all in a spreadsheet. So um, now when I, I have interns come to me, I've got 
I probably have 70 businesses that I've worked with pretty regularly over the past eight years in our, in our town. And I'm just amazed at what we have here. Every day I find something new that we have or a new department we have that I didn't know about. So it's, it's just a great community to work in and do this program in. Thank you for your hard work with that. One of the things I would also like to share is when we began our daycare program, uh, both Mr. and Mrs. Snyder were an integral part in doing the life work for that program and helping launch that. And there are also times when I still reach out to her or Jason reaches out to her for her expertise there as well. So thank you for all that you do for our community and for our students. One other thing, she sells herself short. Mm -hmm. She goes and observes these students at this place of employment, every single one of them. That's traveling there, traveling back, meeting with our kids, meeting with our employers. It is a <coughs> task that it takes a lot of time over summer. Um, sometimes she meets with these individuals when we're on break, so she definitely goes above and beyond and doesn't need to sell herself short because and if she ever tries to leave that, she knows that I'm not going to let her. So. <laughs> <laughs> that recommendation will not come to the board. Yeah. Hey, well, that's been so in, important in building this program. And Jenny, you really took it and grew it because when we started with it, we shared a person with Valley, and that worked just about as well as we can anticipate that it worked. Not that that person wasn't hardworking, but they were, it's too big of a job for a half day based somewhere else. And so you took that. You've done Leadership Academy, so you've built these connections throughout the community. You continue to grow those connections. And that eight years, you said you've been doing this, that, that relationship is vital. If this position had a lot of turnover, it would not be as successful as it has been. And so we appreciate that you stayed with it and grown that. I, I think I've said this before, but our oldest, when he applied to colleges, he had an academic record that stood on its own, but any interview he was in, they wanted to hear about his internships. That's what they were very much interested in. And you provide just a plethora of options for kids. And that's because of the relationships you built with those businesses. If it didn't continue to go well, if you weren't on top of it, we would dry up uh, uh, sure. who we could send them to very quickly. Thank you, Jenny. And I'll tell you, the kids she sends down to the middle school, and I'm sure the elementaries, our students love working with the high school kids and that relationship and that positive role model goes a long way with our kids. So we appreciate you as well. Mm -hmm. well. <clears throat> I can also say that even like with the most obscure interest, because our oldest daughter was wanting to go into anthropology and archaeology and there was like nothing, so we thought, but Jenny was able to facilitate an internship <coughs> for Reagan at the museum in Fulton County, the Fulton County Historical Society Museum. And recently she was just invited to apply for an internship for the Holocaust Museum in Washington, DC. Oh, so wow. she gets to put that on her resume, which is like a huge deal. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Oh. Appreciate it. Jenny, definitely thank you so much for all your time. And I mean, just what Molly was speaking to is an attestment to all your hard work and your time commitment and your love for what you do. So thank you so much. It is not, it, you know, it is noticed. You know, many, many people beyond this room know that. So don't ever think that it's It's good to have someone who knows what to do with the baton once it's been handed to them early in the and knows how to cross the finish line. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, we will move on to the consent items. Um, did anyone have any corrections of a particular set of minutes, or everybody okay with us approving these as a group? Sure. <laughs> Okay, we have the approval of the minutes from February 6th regular meeting, the approval of the minutes from March 5th regular meeting, the approval of the minutes from March 5th study session, the approval of the certification of the February 26th executive session, and the approval of the certification of the March 18th executive session. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Any of those? From the public? Okay. Hearing none. I'll take a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mark. 
Second. Second by Ethan. Bearing other comments? All in favor, raise your right hand. No one on Zoom. Six to zero. Head to count. Okay, moving on to the financial report. We have the funds report. Uh, yes, the first one is our education fund. And as you can see, um, receipts were for the month of February one million forty-one thousand eight hundred eight dollars and thirty-one cents. This print is almost too small for my even my glasses. <laughs> uh, the and then year-to-date receipts are two million one hundred and sixteen thousand eight hundred forty dollars and twenty-six cents. The month-to-date expenses for February were $881,196.40. Our total cash balance at the end of February was $1,461,845.63. Our uh, next fund is our debt service. Well, I better wait. Yep, okay. <laughs> just make sure it was in that order. <laughs> debt service fund, and that one is, right now we're just uh, transferring our receipts in there to cover our debt services and that until we actually have a debt payment, which is, I believe, twice a year. Uh, the receipts in that were $475,084, and year to date is $21,713.76, and that is primarily interest. That's what that is. And the final funder is our operations fund, and for the month of February, we had receipts of $49,772.92. We did not do any transfers, so our year-to-date receipts are $354,609.84, and month-to-date expenses were $298,622.75. Our current cash balance at the end of February was a negative balance of $290,474.99 which will be addressed momentarily. <laughs> <laughs> so transfer is still holding until everything is reconciled we, from pre previous? No, until you prove it tonight. On this agenda. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 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 And that was just a bonus <laughs> random spreadsheet at the bottom, correct? Which one? Something oh. that said from 2021. Yeah. Oh, it must have been. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was looking at. I thought, is this a grant? Or... <laughs> I'm sorry. I was waiting. Okay. Let's just still look at it. You get it. No, no, I guess you're curious, curious about, about good. how yeah. compared. <laughs> oh, you know what? I think this, was it this one? Yes. It has the 2021. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is the, the dates did not get changed, but this was a cumulative spreadsheet that at the end that accumulates all one together, but I yeah, didn't notice that the date had not been changed. <laughs> so that's what that is, I apologize. So it's actual 24. You're stepping in <laughs> midstream. You're gonna pick up on it. <laughs> keep moving. <laughs> okay, any questions about those three reports? We have the approval of the claim, sterling $902,534.14. Any questions about any of the claims? And then the approval of payrolls totaling $1,629,699.36. Any questions about the payrolls? Any questions, comments, or concerns from the public about any of the financial reports? Barring none, I will accept a motion to approve. So moved. So moved by Jenny. I'll second. Second by Stephen. Barring any other comments, all in favor, raise your right hand. Approved, 6 0. <coughs> Action items. We have the approval of the third reading and implementation of the policies. We do have all of those policy numbers listed on our agenda and that were advertised. Any questions about any of these policies? This will be the third reading, so we've read them twice now. Questions, comments, concerns? Anybody want me to read them all the way through? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I, I can go pretty quick. 
<laughs> Might skip some words here and there. Just, <laughs> there's no periods in that sentence. <laughs> no commas. Is there such a thing as a title only? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Barring no questions or comments from the public or the board, I will accept a motion to approve those third reading of the policies. So moved. So moved by Mark. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor, raise your right hand. Approved 6 0. And we will go to the approval of the resolution 2024 03 to transfer funds from the education fund to switch pages to the operations fund on a recurring basis. Whereas the Board of School Trustees is the governing body of the Rochester Community School Corporation, Fulton County, Indiana, and whereas the HEA 1009 required the governing body of each school corporation to establish an education fund for the payment of expenses allocated to student instruction and learning under IC 2042.5. And whereas HEA 1009 required the governing body of each school corporation to establish an operations fund for the payment of expenses that are not allocated to student instruction and learning under IC 2042.5. And whereas HEA 1009 requires that distributions of tuition support be received in the education fund, therefore be it resolved that the Rochester Community School Board of Trustees authorizes the treasurer of the Rochester Community School Corporation to transfer no more than the amount of $1,827,400 from the education fund to the operations fund to reimburse the operations fund for expenses that are not allocated to student instruction and learning under IC 20. Dash 42.5 for the period of 2024. This resolution was duly made, second adopted. Today's date. So this needs to be done yearly. I guess that's right. Mm -hmm. And I think we're at a point that we're comfortable starting to request. Mm -hmm. okay. Any other, did you want to make any other comments or any questions from the board? kind of talked about this the last few meetings and knew it was coming. We were just waiting for the grants and <coughs> other kind of funds to get sifted out. So, yeah. All right. Any other questions from the public? Comments? Okay. All right, no, I'll just a motion to... So moved. <laughs> Second. Approved by your motion by Stephen. Second by Ethan. All in favor, raise your right hand. Approved 6 0. <coughs> You're looking down, I'm like, did I miss something? <laughs> okay, and then we have the approval of the 2024 disposition of checks. <laughs> the 2024 disposition of checks, the following is a list of checks that were voided by the State Board of Accounts guidelines. These checks were are warrant to void two years after December 31st of the year of issue. Do you, do I have to read all of these, like, complete? I was going to say, does anybody want me to read this list complete? It's in the packet, it's online, anybody can see these? Any, any questions or comments? Concerns by the public? Questions, comments? Okay, yeah, I'll accept a motion. I move that we void these checks as listed. Moved by Jenny. Second. Second by Stephen. Any others? All right, none. All in favor? Raise your right hand. Shoot. Approved, six zero. All right. <coughs> we'll move on to the donations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Shada. <laughs> I move quick, you gotta catch me, girl. <laughs> I know. I, well, and it dawned on me, I was like, oh wait, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Donations to the Rochester Community Schools. Month donated was March of 2024. We had uh, to Columbia Elementary $60 for students to purchase books at the Scholastic Book Fair by Donna Fincher. Riddle Elementary, a $600 donation for one book, one school. From Sayo to Zai. I will totally butcher this. Edamu chapter, is that correct? Edamu. 
Uh, Riddle Elementary, $1,200. One book, one school from Mill Creek Church. Riddle Elementary, $200 for one book, one school. Bill and Josanna? Jo Jody. What's that? Jody. Jody? Jody. <laughs> Jody. Newton? Uh, RHS, $200 for RHS Prom, Son on the Run. And our donation to RHS, $500, Key Club from the Kiwanis. And again, also, always gratitude to all of the, the donations that the school gets. It's really amazing how many come in on a monthly basis. It's really amazing, the support by the community. So, any questions, comments, concerns about the donations? Thoughts from the public? No? I'll accept a motion to accept the donations. So moved. Moved by Jenny. Second. Second by Mark. All in favor? Right hand. Motion approved, 6 0. And we'll move on to the personnel report. Recommendations for RHS Kristen, Kristen Horn. Additional duties incurred as treasurer and athletic secretary, stipend $2,500. Spring intercession, Kenneth Hughes, math, hourly rate, 6640. Deb Wolford, math. Hourly rate, 6640. Bryn Wilson, Language Arts, hourly rate, 3991. In the maintenance department, we have Valerie Tolley, head building tech effective March 4th, 2024, an hourly rate, $14 an hour. Maverick Pyle, building tech effective March 5th, 2024, hourly rate, $14 an hour. In the athletic department, we have Jenny Moore for the assistant RMS golf coach, a stipend of $1,140. Troy Pryor, assistant RMS track and field coach, a stipend of $1,140. Lola Brady, a volunteer for RHS girls tennis. And Rachel Enyart, a volunteer for RHS softball. Resignations, <clears throat> Samantha Butler, Columbia Nurse, effective May 24th, 2024. Any questions, thoughts, concerns about personnel report from the board or the public? All right. Hearing none, I'll take a motion to accept the personnel report. So moved. Moved by Ethan. <laughs> Jenny seconded. Sound like it was seconded by Jenny. <laughs> All in favor? <laughs> right hand. Personnel report approved, 6 0. That brings us to Mrs. Vance. I'd like to begin with um, Sheriff Heishman and um, our SRO. If you could talk us through um, with the community listening and the board. <laughs> The steps we take in regards to stop arm violations and, and sure. how that is handled by the sheriff's department once that's. So I emailed you a copy of kind of the report that I'll go over here. Um, <clears throat> when stop arm violations are reported to the school district, they are in, are in turn reported to our school resource officer. Um, they will take that then and bring it to the office um, for review. Um, the officers that are assigned to the case will review it and see if, if in fact, if they believe that a violation did take place. If they determine that a violation did take place, then, then there will be follow-up investigation, typically results in us tracking down the driver and, and knocking on a door and talking to them. Um, and then, a prosecute, then we'll refer to the prosecutor for, for prosecution. So um, just some statistics for this school year since uh, August of 23. We've had 26 violations that were referred to us. Not necessarily they were all violations, but they, they were enough that, that either the, the bus driver, the transportation director, thought that it needed to be referred to us for review. Um, of those 13 violations, 13 were deemed as violations. Um, nine of them were considered no violations, meaning that either the threshold, we didn't think that it met the threshold for prosecution, or that it just simply wasn't a, a true violation. Um, two of those, the, the plates were obscured. Typically we'll see that in the winter months with the snow and the slush and stuff. Um, you just can't get a good reading on it. And then there was two of them that we could actually read the plates, but it wasn't clear enough for us to tell what state they were from or what type of plate they were. So we, out of those four of the four of the 26, we could just couldn't track down a driver for. Um, 13 violations were referred to the prosecuting attorney for charges. Uh, nine of those 
have been charged in their pending dispositions. Three of those have been charged and convicted, and then one case was dismissed by the prosecutor's office. <clears throat> That's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, these are pretty easy statistics that I can pull at any time, so if there's ever any questions or anything about any of it, don't hesitate to reach out. We can certainly get them to you. So, any questions for me? I can't tell you, we represent uh, uh, Tippy Valley in the, in the same, same uh, spectrum, and, and this group here is by far more vigilant, you know, as far as getting us the violations, um, as far as uh, being able to communicate back and forth. If we don't feel some of the violations, we may feel like the, the bus driver may have, you know, it may have been better for the bus driver to wait for that car to pass. It would have been difficult for that car to stop. And, and we could communicate that to the, to the transportation director and, and have really open lines of communication. So um, I, I want to thank you guys for that, um, to be able to do that. So. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Has Peter there been explaining that? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Has there been? I know it it didn't become a, a, as much of a huge thing as it sounded like it was going to be at the time. But has there been any? Uh, I guess discussion because obviously it would have been up in the statistics if there was an incident with the uh, golf cart ordinance in how like yeah. the cameras work with that. Uh, we haven't seen it. We've had golf cart golf carts out in the county for years. And, right. Uh, right. It was never, it's never been an issue um, as far as we're aware of out there. So I, I really didn't foresee any issues with the city. So, and I, to my knowledge, there haven't been any, any issues with that. So. Are we having any school? Yes. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm aware of. They're not coming to the parent line yet. <laughs> <laughs> What's I do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 any questions or anything? Any other questions? I'll hear anything. Like I said, these are super easy stats to pull, so if there's ever any questions at any time, don't hesitate to reach out, man. So. How did, one, I'm sorry, one yeah. question. How does that, and you may not have looked at this, how does that compare to like last year, like in a quarter? Yeah. I could tell you, uh, not off the top of my head, but I could, yeah, I could certainly, we could do year to year comparison. Uh, Rochester was really quick after the, the incident in 2018. You guys were really quick on getting the, the, the video cameras on the buses. Um, and really quick in implementing this. I think we started our first violations like in February of 19, so um, which was far ahead of any other school district that I'm aware of um, around. So um, I could certainly do year to year comparisons and, and let you know that that wouldn't be an issue at all. So I can email that out to Janet and she can get it out to everybody. Sure. You can so. think about it, if you can just email it to Janet. It's yeah. kind of interesting to see yep. if they're going Yeah, to and I couldn't tell you if they're trending up or down. Um, this, this seems pretty average, I hate to say. Um, mm -hmm. And there's really no, We've, we've looked at it based off of gender and based off of age and, and everything. There's really no pattern there. Um, you know, we've got brand new students and we've got, I, I wrote one to a 90 some year old Korean vet, you know, a couple of years ago. So there's just no rhyme or reason to it. Um, most of them, they say that they didn't realize that the stop arm was out or that the lights were activated, but the bus drivers do a really good job. They'll honk their horn when that violation's taken place. So it kind of it sparks that driver to be like, yeah, I didn't notice anything until somebody honked at me. And then I noticed that the stop arm was out. So, yeah. Thank you. Yep. Go through admin, uh, administrative reports. So Mr. Haas, if you'd like to start for the high school. Uh, things that have been awesome at RHS. Uh, we just come off of spring break and had intercession. We had 53 kids come to intercession. Um, I think it was probably a year, year and a half ago, we switched to making our teachers' grades due before we went on break so that we could really not <coughs> at home with kids. And that's really brought our numbers up for them to kind of help with credit recovery. So that's been a huge positive in the building. We just had the FFA auction at the fairgrounds. Uh, probably the best weather we've had in, <laughs> since I can remember. Uh, so it was nice out there. Um, some of the stuff was going high, some of it was going low, just depending on what we were looking to bid on. So that was a, a good experience for our kids again. Uh, we had our band and choir concerts right before break. We sent a team to the South Bend Robotics Competition. Um, Mr. Lambert deserves a lot of credit for that. He had never done the level of robotics that we are signed up for. He kind of got thrown into that with the resignation of another teacher, and we got recognized by the judges for our robots' performance up there, which is kind of a big deal for our group of kids who really 
put some things together at the last minute. By last minute, I mean when they pulled in, they were told something wasn't to spec and there was a scramble there. So they did a great job. Congratulations to Mr. Lamer and them. Uh, all the spring sports kick off. I believe they all kick off this week except for maybe girls tennis. They will start early next week. So um, we were glad to wrap up winter sports and we had a blood drive that we had our highest number of donors ever for Rochester High School. So we appreciate the community supporting our key club in doing that. Uh, what we have coming up, we have NHS induction. We have a Eclipse party. We're gonna cook about 600 hot dogs, turn on some Eclipse music and uh, rock out the football field. That's gonna be a good time. Uh, and RMS is gonna join us in that, that be interesting. Um, <laughs> we have the spring musical coming up April 12th and 13th, the Adams Family. Uh, Miss Allen and uh, her squad are doing a great job getting ready for that. We have the Art Banner Contest Awards coming up and we have prom. Prom, April 20th. If anybody wants to chaperone, just shoot me an email. We'll get you set up to help with that, Mrs. Vance. And then, uh, <laughs> it's that time of year. Seniors, we're gonna start having senior meetings. Senior yard signs are gonna start popping up. Jostens is starting to deliver caps and gowns. That means, uh, as Mrs. Murphy's winding down, we're winding up to get those seniors across the stage. So. We appreciate everything you guys are doing for us, and we'll get those kids across that stage here in about 10 weeks. So we're excited. <laughs> Nine, 10, something. <laughs> Lots of the same, so I won't say all the same things, but um, we too have the band and choir and um, lots of spring things that come up with our fifth grade vision screens. We do the wonderful puberty talks for fifth grade. That was right before spring break. We had our uh, <laughs> Valentine party and dance. Um, that was highly anticipated and well attended. Um, we wrapped up our basketball boys and girls and wrestling. They did well. Track begins tomorrow for the middle school. Um, our intercession went well as well. We don't have near as many kids because we don't attach, we don't get to attach any kind of grade with it. So it's a little harder to get kids to attend at the middle school, but um, we did have a successful intercession. Coming up, um, we do have our NJHSDC trip that we're taking our seventh grade kiddos. That is um, April 30th through May 5th. We have all of our college field trips coming up. Uh, seventh grade is going to Manchester, sixth grade to Ivy Tech and Kokomo, and fifth grade to Grace College. Um, we have a big, PBIS is planning a big event for Before I Learn to hype the kids up. And then of course we'll have I Learn. Um, and then we are just working on that master schedule and start scheduling as soon as we can as well. Any questions? Okay. Um, our second graders did also have a concert right before spring break. Did real well. So shout out to Mrs. Weaver. We also uh, finished our I, re I uh, read three testing right before spring break. So the second and third graders all all took that. That went very well. And then uh, we'll have uh, final scores by after our summer program uh, for students that didn't pass this first round. Um, we had our big one school, one book reveal today. So it is Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, for those that were wondering. Shout out to Mrs. T here, was uh, Willy Wonka, and appreciate that. Um, and as, I wanna shout out the donations too. As you can see, there were three on the, the docket tonight. Um, and almost every month, you're gonna, we've seen oh, one school, one book donation. So without the community support that we have been given, um, it wouldn't be possible. It costs uh, a lot of money, but also uh, time and resources in the community provides that for us. So thank you very, very much. Uh, and Hope Shally, thank you for setting up a play for us on Thursday. We're gonna be able to go to the high school to see uh, Willy Wonka play. So we've got that set up. And uh, also, which I'm very excited about, we're actually, the kids have an opportunity to purchase a candy bar in the morning. Um, and if they're unable to, we can make it happen for them. And 20 of those students will receive a golden ticket oh. and a prize to go to the South Bend Chocolate Factory. Mm. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, and then that'll wrap up at the end of, of April. Our intercession with Columbia and Riddle went very well. Thank you, Officer Utter and Scott for the bike safety enrichment program. I think you said we handed out 65 helmets or so, yeah. Mr. Schneider. 
And then uh, also Times Theater hosted Columbia and Riddle students for Monsters, Inc. over break as well. So thank you, Julie, from Times Theater for having us. That went very, very well and was well attended as well. And we've got report cards heading home on Wednesday. And our Girls on the Run program with Mrs. Grieger starts tomorrow. Questions? I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. I did see some social media pictures. And I'm, were you the Graham? I'm Grandpa Joe. <laughs> Grandpa Joe now. Unfortunately, Amazon, they, they, they emailed me today and said it was a supply chain issue with my nightgown. So maybe that was a blessing. I don't know. But everything else came in. Yeah. <laughs> what a great moment. Yes, Grandpa Joe. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if I can follow him. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but he may not have been Grandpa Joe before. I don't know, maybe he has been, but I've seen Mr. Snyder in the unveiling of Captain Underpants. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I found those underpants in my bathroom at school the other day, and I thought, you know, I probably don't need to have these. <laughs> because they're like a size triple extra large. <laughs> I do have people go in there and clean that. So. <laughs> um, I uh, don't know what we've done in the last month now. This <laughs> derailed me. No, it's fine. Um, we did uh, Read Across America. We participated in that program. Um, the week right before fall break, we had a uh, uh, couple of days where we had parents and community members and just different people in the in the community come in and read to our kids. It was uh, very well done and uh, the kids really enjoyed it. The kids go from room to room so they get to um, have multiple different people read to them and uh, we just think it's a great thing to, to be modeling to the kids, um, you know, reading and how important it is and for them to get to meet some of our local community members. Uh, Luke already mentioned our bike safety class that we had um, and the movie at the Times Theater. We had about 100 kids total between the two buildings. Uh, that was awesome. And we started to, we included our um, before care and after care programs. As long as we've had that program here, they usually don't do anything over breaks and we didn't, we're not really sure why. So we're starting to make sure that if there's anything going on at all that those before care and after care kids can participate in our enrichments. And if we don't have an enrichment they can participate in, then they're gonna start doing some of their own things over breaks, which, which would be really good for those kids. So. Um, report cards go home on Wednesday. I think somebody already mentioned that. Uh, next week we are taking, um, or I take that back, this next week we are taking uh, some kids to the flagpole. Uh, they teach them how we take like kids sometimes to learn how to make pizzas and things here in the local. Uh, flagpole teaches them, shows them how to make their, uh, how, how they make their um, ice cream. So um, we'll take 10 kids up there and uh, they uh, were Zebra Zone winners, went to star cards uh, that they had received. Uh, we have Kindergarten Roundup on April 5th. Uh, the Eclipse is April the 8th. And um, on April 11th, we've got a, a lot going on at Columbia. Um, first grade's got an Earth Day presentation. The state provided um, these presentations. You just had to sign up for them. So uh, we've got a, a gentleman coming out to uh, present to our first graders about Earth Day. And then um, I, we were able to get the uh, Sky Dome, which is one of those um, planetarium type deals uh, that uh, they, they blow up. And um, we're going to utilize that with our first grade and our pre K. Uh, the Sky Domes are a little bit different than when you guys probably went through with them, like when I did. They, all you could see was the constellations, and they kind of had like a projector that was projecting slides or something on nowadays it's like a high def videos and you can take a trip to mars or the moon and like i mean it's completely changed in terms of the technology so we're gonna get since i'm gonna have it in the building i i talked to pre-k and we're gonna get our pre-k kids in there and take them on a trip to the moon or the mars or um, something cool like that and then our first grade's all going through it and then we're going to start to do it um every year and uh, try to bring it in every year so every kid that goes through Columbia and gets a couple experiences in there. So that's all I got. So we have finally completed our verification process. 100% of the households have responded. 
which is good because last year we only had a third of that. Um, we won't have to mess with this again until October where it starts over again for the new school year. We received $18,545.69 in additional what the state calls brown box commodity goods for our students, which was a plus. For the 24-25 school year, we are awarded $109,969.78. The forecast survey has been completed, 20,000 of it. We're going to put into their fresh fruit and vegetable program to get locally sourced produce coming into the facilities. Um, we did receive in February assistance for the supply chain fund that we did apply for, and that amount was $41,317.09. We have our current dairy um, request out for, for proposal, and that should be completed by 411 of 24, with them telling me by June 5th of 24, we should have our dairy and our vendor contracts ready to go for the next school year. The summer food has been opened up for the application process, and I do have an April towards the end of the month deadline as far as submitting where we wanna have locations, what time we wanna serve from, and I'm in the process of working with that. There's eight to 10 hours worth of training that has to be done, and then I have to go in and train site supervisors, and then anybody else that's working the program after that's completed, and hopefully that will be done by the end of April also. Um, let's see. And then I have a training on Thursday that I'm gonna participate in. The IDOE sent a notification that they're going to do a summer EBT program that's called Sunbucks for any children in households that are eligible for school. So if they filled out a free and reduced application or if they are direct certified or they go out to the office for assistance, they will qualify for it. This time around, because we had one with COVID that they kept referring back to us, this time around they're gonna be more hands-on so they can answer questions instead of getting stuck between locations to locations. I'm not sure if the 120 per child is in one drop or three drops based on June, July, and August, but I'll find out more on Thursday and we will participate by putting a flower out with flyer out with our summer food uh, information to let parents know that that is available for their children if they qualify. Any questions? Okay. Maintenance department's been busy trying to get ramped up for summer. The grounds fields, scoreboards for all the athletics. Um, I believe by the end of the week we should have all the fields, scoreboards and everything op operational, new you know, lights replaced and stuff. Um, I think as of right now we've taken nine trailers of shrub sticks out to the city and four truckloads. Um, I just talked to the street department today and they said they will make accommodations if we want to post it by the road that they'll be able to come and shred it up for us instead of having us take it out there because it's you can't get a whole lot on a trailer you know with it being sticks and everything so um, I believe everything's going well it's just been a process so If you rent some dangerous equipment, I'll run it for you. <laughs> like, things with spinning blades and stuff like that. Like that kind of stuff. That'll be for the summer. <laughs> Jana Jan won't let me. Well, we just won't tell her. We'll hard for <laughs> any, any tools. <laughs> any <laughs> And just a reminder, Jason brought it up, but just a reminder to parents, and I want to thank um, Hope Shally and RCTA um, in regards to their support of making that Monday of the eclipse a day where we can have learning opportunities. There's a lot of education that can go behind that process. Um, for parents, we have dismissal times listed on our website, and I'm sure principals and social media will continue to send that out, but we'll start school at regular times. We're, um, delaying the, the release time, but that can be found on our website, and I want to thank the teachers for engaging in that. Yeah. Um, our kids in our class were super blessed. They said they felt happy that other schools were letting out, 
and they're getting bonus time in the classroom. <laughs> so, thanks everybody. <laughs> they said, we said, well, we're getting a Wednesday off. What are we, what are we gonna get? <laughs> Extra learning, kids. <laughs> Don't make it a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're in secondary, you get a hot dog and water. Oh, no, <laughs> Big pair of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> hot dog. Mrs. Ants. Yes. Before you adjourn, I want to recognize Rick. Uh, Mitch, our other SRO, is leaving us because he's young and wants the road experience and all the action. And then we bring in Rick, who just wants to kind of hang out with us and hang out with kids, and then we got live action. So. <laughs> Rick's done a great job. We want to welcome him to the team, and we appreciate everything he's doing, getting acclimated with the buildings, walking around, getting up on the roofs, and doing that kind of stuff to keep us safe. So, he has yeah, he got thrown into the fire by the secondary. <laughs> <laughs> so, we kept checking on him, making sure yeah. he was okay. So he was going to come back the next play. day. I got flight to the time too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sincerely, you're doing a wonderful job. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you all for your. We appreciate your time at the meetings. It's really nice to hear from each building and each department. And Rick, welcome. Thanks. I know you were here last time, and we really want to welcome you in and appreciate all that you've done so far. <laughs> <laughs> we're hoping for a quiet end of the year. Oh, <laughs> That's like Jana saying, we haven't had a snow day yet, and then three days later, it was like, eh, 5.30, you get the phone call. And thank you to, it sounds like Hope was a, a, a key part of this, but Luke announcing about the um, play coming, and just what a full circle moment. And I think that's so awesome that both Jay and Jenny get to come back and see what our auditorium is like now. And um, I've had the opportunity to see Jay perform a few times since we graduated. And um, it, how cool to have it bring kids and then our kids see what other kids could do. Like mm -hmm. it's, I hope we have other opportunities to do something similar. So thank you to all, all who were on the team that, that oh. connected and to do that and to have that tie in with One Book, One School. That's just so awesome. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Does anyone have anything else you'd like to bring to the table tonight? No. no? Was that a yes or was that, was that a no? Was that a yes? <laughs> <laughs> anyone in the public? Anything you'd like to share? Well, thank you all for coming. We appreciate your time. Meeting adjourned. You may stay if you wish. We'll see you tomorrow morning, right? <laughs>